All right, everybody, welcome back to the workbench. So in this episode, I'm going to be working on a Christmas present for my son. And I picked up this blue box, undecorated caboose. And this is a bay window caboose. This is a very, very simple kit to build. And basically how, what I'm doing with this is I'm going to be making it into a on, the, on track for the cure breast cancer awareness caboose. And I got these decals from uh, Circus City, and uh, we're gonna try. And these are not actually not for a caboose. This is for a um, a box car, I believe. Um, so, but I'm gonna use these to actually uh, make this into a custom-made one-of-one -one caboose. So, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna wash these parts with warm water, um, just to make sure that. Um, there's any type of grease or mold release still on this or what have you. I'm going to clean these up really good and I'm going to be using the um, same type of dish detergent I use to wash dishes. So a Dawn or something like that will take off any type of grease that could be on this model. Uh, once I do that, then I'm going to be using the uh, Tamiya paints. And this is actually white, but I do have the primer and I have the, um, the pink color as well so i'm going to be using a rattle can but the reason why i'm using a rattle can is i don't want to use an airbrush for this um but i can control these um these tamiya colors pretty well and in fact these come out very very nice and thin and uh is a good quality paint it's not the cheapest but it works so um i believe a can like this is yeah, 6.99 so it's not it's not uh it's not cheap stuff and the uh, taller can for the primer is like around 12 bucks. So um, let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting all the detail parts and the trucks and everything else and the roof rock. So here's all the parts. I bought this kit used. Um, so I'm going to take all these parts and I'm going to be uh, putting on uh, KD uh, couplers and also Intermountain wheels. So let's get started. Let's get these parts painted and then... Uh, I'll show you some more uh, progress. All right, so I, um, I painted these with a satin black, and I used this product here, Vestolium. Okay. So you have the base. I even painted the magnet, and it's not doesn't matter because the magnet's going to be uh, mounted inside like that, but. It's just personal preference. Um, so that's this optional, that step. I didn't put a lot of paint. I just dusted it on just so it doesn't rust. Um, you got the trucks. And prior to painting these trucks, what I did is I soaked them and scrubbed them in 91% uh, alcohol. Um, I was watching a podcast and they're showing that it keeps the uh, paint from uh, flaking off. Uh, it has more adhesion uh, to the part itself. So got those done and then you have the uh, brake stands brake wheels and then also the roof uh, stack and then you have the underneath detail in addition to that I painted the uh, crosswalk black and I think that's giving me a nice contrast to the pink color and then I also painted the uh, the hand railings black and then also the uh, the ladders so nice there's not a lot of uh, detail on these so it's only four pieces so it's, it's gonna work out pretty well all right so uh, let's get the uh, caboose painted and then uh, we'll show the final step on, on how that's gonna look so uh, we'll be right back all right so I got the caboose painted and it's a nice uh, almost very glossy finish so I can be able to do the uh, decal pretty easily on this and uh, it came out pretty good so this color is very similar to uh, an Atherin card that I picked up, God, about 10 years ago. And it's from the Wisconsin and Southern. And then I found out that Scale Trains did it too. So I was able to find one of these, which is pretty cool. But if you look at this pink, it's like almost very, very accurate to that color. So this right here is actually going to be a Christmas present too. So this is going to go along with uh, the caboose. And in addition... I got another one too, but this pink is totally different um, 
from what I painted. And this car here is from Atlas. All right, this is the master line. So this is a pretty cool one. Now I found out there's two versions of this car, one like this, and then there's other ones with little handprints all over the cars, uh, over the side of the car rather. So that's, that's, it has the same number, but it just has handprints. So um, this also is gonna be a Christmas present. So um, when you see this video, it's gonna be Christmas day. So I'm not gonna ruin a surprise. So I'm sure he's gonna really like these. Um, and I have a few, few others for him as well. So what I'm gonna do now is get the, um, get this decaled and then uh, I'll show you my, uh, the progress on it. So uh, we'll be right back. All right, just to show you the tools that I use when I do my uh, decaling. So obviously you're gonna have decals. Um, if your decals come with directions, read the directions. They're there for a reason. Um, I have these little uh, tweezers that specifically um, pick up decals without damaging them. They have like a flat, like a spatula type of uh, head on it. And I got these from Micromark. I have a blade to make sure you have a nice sharp one because you don't want to tear the decal. Um, I'm using Microset, Microsol. And then also some Q-tips. So uh, let's get started. And um, I'm gonna do a voiceover for this next section and then uh, hope you enjoy it. We'll be right back. When I cut out my decals, I like to use a metal ruler and also a brand new cutting blade. I had to cut out the ribbon by hand because of the shape of the ribbon and also I wanted to cut as close to the edge of the ribbon as I could to minimize the amount of film that I was going to have on the model. Now that all the decals have been cut from the sheet, now what I'm gonna do is actually place them in the water one at a time. Depending on the size of the decal will determine how long it should stay in the water 
but on the average, I leave them in there for about 30 seconds and then put my setting solution on and then slowly slide the decal off the backing paper. All right, so I got the first part done, or the first side anyway, and um, it definitely was rusty on doing decals. Wow. So um, but I'm very, very impressed with these Circus City decals. You can barely see the film. And once I put the, um, I mean, look how good that looks. I mean, that's incredible. That is the thinnest film I've seen. That's incredible right there. But anyway, um, once I put the uh, dry coat on, I'm sorry, the dull coat on, um, that is going to actually disappear. So, so I got this whole side done. I want this thing to sit. And then I did the end numbers too. So I was taking a look at these decals and these are actually for a uh, covered hopper, but that's all right. This will work. So uh, let me, uh, I'm going to take a quick break, let this set up, and then I'm going to come back and do the other side. So uh, we'll be back. All right, so I finished up the decal for this model, and I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with these Circus City uh, decals. Uh, let me show you why. Um, they are razor thin. You can barely see the film, but look what I was able to do around the rivets. And around the bracing of the car it looks like the entire thing is just painted on so very very impressive this side as well all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to let this dry and let these set up overnight and then tomorrow um I'm going to clear it and then uh, put the rest of this uh, car back together. So uh, we'll be back. All right. So this morning I uh, put a quick coat of dull coat on this model and I'm using the regular dull coat from testers. And I put a light coat on this morning. Like I said, um, you can hardly see the film. So but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, highlight these grabs right here. And there's some ones on the back as well and along the sides. So what I'm going to use that for that is I'm going to use uh, gesso black. I'm going to put on a micro brush and just lightly just hit them just to make sure they're highlighted. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to uh, dull coat it once more, another light coat. Once that dries, I'm going to put together the bottom half of the car. And then uh, by the time I get done with that, I'll be able to handle this piece again. Um, and I'm going to glaze the windows. So I'm actually going to put acetate in there. I'm not going to make the, uh, I'm not going to make the windows dirty like I normally do. Uh, because I want to keep this car as, as clean as possible. I may add a little bit of dry brush into it. But other than that, I'm not going to have any type of weathering on this car. Um, I think it looks good the way it is. It doesn't really require weathering. So uh, I may do a little bit, but nothing nothing too over the top. So uh, let me get the, um, the black paint out, my micro brush. I'm going to start painting these grab irons. And then uh, after that, like I said, we're going to do a little dough coating and assembly. So uh, let me get back to work here. So in this segment, I'm going to be using the Gesso Black from Liquitex. You can get that at Michael's. And I'm also using the uh, larger micro brushes.
All right, so I got the, uh, the grab irons all painted. Actually, uh, came out a little bit better than I expected. Um, these are molded on grab irons, so I try to highlight them the best I can, but it looks pretty good. It really uh, breaks up the, the pink color a lot. And then once I start adding the rest of the detail, um, it's gonna tie this uh, piece together really nice. So uh, let me go on to the next step. I'm gonna wait about 15 minutes for this to dry. I'm gonna clear it once one last time, and then uh, we're gonna finish this uh, project up. So uh, so far I'm pretty uh, pretty happy how it's coming out. So I'm sure my son is gonna like it, and uh, it's definitely gonna be a memorable Christmas. So anyway, we'll be back. So this is gonna be an optional step. Uh, what I like to do is I like to run a tap through uh, the bottoms of the Atherin Blue Box cars uh, for the 256 thread. And it just makes it a lot easier uh, when you're uh, installing the, uh, the couplers. Again, this is just an option I do. You don't have to do this, but uh, if you try it, you'll continue to use it. It's that, it's that effective of a technique. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually glaze the windows in the caboose. And I'm using just a regular piece of acetate that was in another kit that I bought. And um, I'm just gonna cut out some window pieces and then glue them into the actual caboose. So I just have a few of them to make. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got about 10 to 12 um, windows to cut out, nothing crazy. So uh, let me get these windows cut out, glued in, and then I got to start the assembly process. So Christmas is only a couple days away, so I got to get this done. So uh, let me get to work. All right, so I got the uh, windows glazed, as you can tell. They're all done. One important thing to uh, realize when you're doing this um, you want to use a tweezer if all possible because as you're putting the, um, the acetate in there it's kind of hard to see on camera but basically when you're cutting the pieces out and you put the glue on the pieces you can just place it in there it's kind of hard to work with all your fingers in there it's such a small little space so uh, I would recommend getting a nice pair of tweezers you can get these at mostly any train show so but anyway so this is gonna be set. Now I'm gonna let this glue set up for about, you know, about a half hour, and then I'll come back and then start assembling the caboose. So uh, we'll be back. All right, so I got some more of the car assembled. Trucks are on. I installed the uh, 33 inch inner mountain wheels. All the windows are glazed. And then I put the uh, roof walk on. A little smokestack. And there's the, uh, the other coupler. So what I'm gonna do next is um, get the uh, ladders on, the railings and the brake wheels. And then uh, it's gonna complete this build. So, uh, and Christmas is two days away now. So, gotta get going. So, may have to uh, work third shift tonight. But uh, we'll be back and uh, I'll show you some more progress. All right guys, so I finished up the car. It's ready to go. Not really good. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it upstairs, I'm gonna photograph it in my light box, and then we're gonna wrap up this video. So uh, we'll be right back. 